Ozempic is definitely a buzzword lately. Whether you've heard it from Hollywood celebrities or CEOs like Elon Musk, this diabetes medication that has been shown to cause weight loss seems to be everywhere. Well, we know that fertility can be impacted by obesity and being overweight. So a lot of my fertility patients are asking me if it's okay to take Ozempic while you're trying to conceive. If you're curious too, watch this video. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist helping people build families and answering my patients' questions every day. And last couple of weeks, everything has been about Ozempic. So it's a buzzword. People are talking about it. People are curious if this miracle weight loss drug can be used to help with obesity when someone's trying to conceive. And so I wanted to answer my patients' questions. And so I looked into it myself and we are going to do a deep dive in this video. With this video, you're going to learn exactly what Ozempic is, how it works, side effects for Ozempic, and we're going to go over the research, which there's very little, about how it might impact fertility. And I will leave you with my recommendations for my patients that are trying to conceive. Ozempic is a medication that was designed to treat type 2 diabetes. Ozempic is a brand name for a generic medication called semaglutide. Semaglutide is a glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonist that is administered once a week as an injection. Semaglutide has been shown in many clinical studies to control blood sugars and diabetics, decrease the risk of cardiovascular events, and help with weight loss. It's this last benefit that the buzz is all about. From Elon Musk tweeting about Ozempic and showing pictures of his own weight loss journey, to Oscar buzz and Jimmy Kimmel even joking about Ozempic during the Oscars this year. Looks so great. When I look around this room, I can't help but wonder, is Ozempic right for me? <laughs> There's so many before and after celebrity photos, and I have no idea if these celebrities are taking Ozempic, but that is certainly what the tabloids are saying and suggesting. So now that we know what Ozempic is, let's go over how it works. Semaglutide works by mimicking the action of a hormone called glucagon peptide 1. And by hormone, it means it attaches to the receptor and helps it work better or work like that hormone would in your body. In the body, GLP-1 decreases blood sugars in multiple different mechanisms. Number one, it stimulates the release of insulin from the pancreas, and that helps decrease blood sugar. Number two, it decreases the release of glucagon from the pancreas, um, and that's another blood sugar control mechanism. And number three, it slows down gastric emptying to decrease the absorption of sugar from your intestines. The weight loss results seen by taking these medications are from two main mechanisms. Number one, they act as an appetite suppressant, and number two, they slow down gastric emptying. So you feel full faster because it takes longer for your stomach to empty. So Ozempic was studied and only approved by the FDA for treatment of diabetes. But when the pharmaceutical company started to see the side effect or the benefit from weight loss, they decided to take advantage of this mechanism. Ozempic was designed and approved by the FDA to treat diabetes. But when people started to see the weight loss benefits of this drug, many people started to use it off-label. That means using a medication for a reason that it's not FDA approved. So people were using Ozempic to help with weight loss without diabetes, even though it wasn't approved for that by the FDA. That's what off-label means. In one clinical trial, people who took semaglutide lost almost 15% of their body weight compared to less than 5% in the patients that were taking a placebo, meaning they were taking something that was an injection and they weren't sure if it was Ozempic or not, but they definitely lost a lot less weight. That's a very well done study. The pharmaceutical company that makes Ozempic decided to take advantage of what people were already doing, and they did a couple of things to create a new brand and market it as a weight loss drug. They basically took the same medication, semaglutide, number one, increased the dose, number two, changed the packaging, and number three, got the FDA to approve it specifically for weight loss. So this has exploded, whether it's on TikTok, social media, Instagram, celebrity tabloids, these medications, semaglutide, whether it's Ozempic or Wegovy, they're the same thing, but people are using them for weight loss. 
So let's talk about the side effects because just like any medication, you have to be careful. You have to go over the pros and cons, talk about the risks and benefits. The most common side effects of these semaglutide medications are really gastrointestinal related. So nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, abdominal pain, and some serious side effects have been reported, including pancreatitis and even kidney damage. These are very rare. I know a common side effect you've probably heard of is ozempic face. If you see some of these before and after pictures with celebrities or some ozempic face pictures, it's basically a thinning of the face and sort of a hollowing out. And the thought is, is if you're losing fat very quickly, you could also lose subcutaneous fat quickly and get this sort of like hollowed out ozempic face. Another side effect that a lot of people haven't talked about is you really only lose weight while you're taking the medication. So if you aren't changing other things in your lifestyle, your habits, as soon as you stop that medication, the weight could come right back. So these are real side effects, and it is important to take this medication under the supervision of a doctor. The medication is usually started off very low dose and gradually increased to see a benefit. The goal is to lose weight um, very slowly, not to have this drastic effect. You see some TikToks where people are losing like 30 pounds before a wedding or something like that. No, this is a serious medication and it should be um, taken very carefully and under the supervision of a doctor and looking for side effects if they happen. Now, what about weight and fertility? So obesity and fertility is a very controversial and very sensitive topic for a lot of people. I mean, if you just do a search for obesity and fertility, you will see that being overweight can be associated with infertility, menstrual irregularities, taking longer to conceive, um, and ovulation, increased risk of miscarriage, increased risk of pregnancy complications. I mean, this is real. The hard part is, is that every body is different and there are people that are fertile at different weights. How many people who are listening right now who have PCOS have been told by their provider, oh, if you just lose weight, everything will be fine or your PCOS will go away. Well, some people, if they do lose a little weight, will start cycling again or decrease acne or have decreased symptoms with PCOS, but it's just not that simple. I actually have a TikTok that is talking just about this. What the fuck? This is way too common. Listen, insulin, blood sugar, weight, it is intimately related with PCOS, but losing weight is not easy and it's not for everyone. It doesn't fix the problem. So that short video resonated with a lot of people. And I can tell you how I talk to my patients about weight and fertility. Number one, first of all, I ask if it's okay to talk about because sometimes it's okay. And sometimes people are just like, not today, Dr. Shaheen. It is not the right time. Let's talk about it in the future. Okay. I am honest that obesity and studies has been associated with all the complications that we talk about. And some people really will see a benefit in their reproductive health if they do lose weight. But I emphasize that people can be fertile at different weights. We don't want to do anything drastic. If you really restrict, whether it's calorie restrict or over exercise, um, in a really quick manner and lose a lot of weight quickly, that can elevate your stress hormones, cortisol, that can throw off your cycles, can actually have the opposite effect of what you want. So let's focus on overall health, nutrition, thinking about healthy choices, but not to the point where you're restricting so much. You got to enjoy life. Finding resources is important. I always give my patients resources, you know, registered dietitians, um, talk to them about things that have worked in the past um, and what things have not worked in the past um, and really finding sometimes a weight loss coach can be really helpful. So finding that right resource for you, but not coming at it from a point of shame, talking about like, hey, this is what we know and this is what we don't know, but let's work together on this because your goal is to start your family or add a baby to your family and let's figure it out together. So when we're talking about weight and fertility, my patients often ask about ways to lose weight. And recently, semaglutides have come up, whether it's Ozempic or Wegovy, patients are asking me, can I take this while I'm trying to conceive? And this is both my female and my male patients. So what does the research show? The research happens to be all over the place. There's more data in men um, and more data in animal models compared to human models. 
and not a lot of research in women as far as reproduction and the impact of these medications. But let's go over what we see and what we know. So for men, people with testicles, there are GLP-1 receptors in testicular tissue. So it's not crazy to think that this might impact reproductive health. We found it in mice models as well as human testicular tissue. They have these receptors. So if the receptors are there, what does it mean? Well, the studies are all over the place. There's one study I found that showed that taking semaglutides decreased testosterone levels. And that's concerning for reproductive health because lower testosterone can be associated with lower libido, erectile dysfunction, and lower sperm counts. Now, Side note, remember, if you are trying to conceive, um, you do not want to take testosterone because testosterone will make it so your own testicles don't make their own testosterone. And if your testicles are not making testosterone, they're also not going to make sperm. And I can't tell you how many times I've had to teach patients this and teach providers that have referred patients to me and they gave them testosterone because they thought they were helping. So remember that. That is really important. If you have testicles, do not take testosterone when you're trying to conceive. Another study was pretty reassuring. This one showed that giving semaglutide did not impact the male reproductive hormonal axis. And just to confuse you a little bit more, a third study showed that they might actually be beneficial. This study in particular said there was such a benefit with weight loss and hormonal balance, these medications might even be used as a treatment for male factor infertility. Now, this is all really preliminary. And I am not saying that it's absolutely okay for men who are planning to conceive to take Ozempic or Wegovy. I think that it's too early for us to tell, but the data that's out there is just all over the place. So what about women? Well, there's a study that showed that women who have PCOS showed benefit from taking these medications with the weight loss. They saw more hormonal balance, um, more regular ovulation, um, and a benefit, which can be helpful if you're trying to conceive. But, and big, wait, 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 there are studies that show that there might be an association with fetal malformations and pregnancy poor outcomes if someone's taking these medications when they do conceive. So the American Diabetes Association says women who have the possibility or they're trying to conceive should really avoid these medications because we don't know enough right now. So let's recap. We have gone over the buzz of the Ozempic or Wegovy semaglutide medications. I know you're hearing about it everywhere and it seems like all of the celebrities are taking it, but it is a real medication. These medications were designed to treat diabetes and help with blood sugar control. And as a side benefit, they helped with weight loss. But there are side effects with these medications, a lot of GI side effects, nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, abdominal pain. And you should only take these medications under the care of a doctor that can slowly titrate up the dose and help you with controlled, low side effects and controlled ease of weight loss. And Right now, we do not have enough information to say it is safe to take while you are trying to conceive in men or in women. And there are some animal studies that have shown some fetal malformations when animals were taking it when they were pregnant. So we can definitely not say that it's safe. And what I'm telling my patients is we don't know enough right now, but that especially if it's a female patient who's planning to conceive, that person should stop the Ozempic or the Wegovy or these semaglutide medications for about two or three months before they try to conceive. That is not a perfect number. This is not a proven recommendation. This two to three months before you conceive is kind of talking to colleagues and other doctors, and we're all trying to figure out what's best, but we don't know how long it takes to get these medications truly out of your system. We don't know the impact on eggs that are ovulating, sperm production. So we like you do in medicine, it's better to be safe than sorry. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Like this video if you learned something, comment with questions that you have. Be sure and subscribe to this channel so you get my weekly video and stick around for more learning.